Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to talk about some small eternal news. We're going to answer a ton of listener questions, including our top 10 figures in modern right now. Uh, competitively speaking, I am your sexy ranch and co host, Calderness. This is episode 388. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, oh, six, six people, people think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Okay, Google, the back some more. Let's attack him. Wow, wow, wow. This listening of the Dialogue for Heroclix podcast brings us the news from our sponsor, Senator Jack Monroe. Hey there. Thanks, Ted. Thanks for the opening. I'm Senator Jack Monroe. And as you know, I like to talk about only the hardest subjects in this world of Heroclix because I am here to be your senator. I want your vote to be your representative in the world of Heroclix. Now, we all know one thing is that we have a ton of hero clicks, and sometimes you just need to sell those bad boys, and you just need to get rid of them. Well, why would you ever want to get paid and get taken a PayPal fee out of it? That's what those certain trolls do, and amphibians like to do, is when they pay you for your hard-earned hero clicks, they stiff you with the PayPal fee. And I think that's just wrong. I think you're entitled to that money. They already stiff you with shipping. Why would they stiff you once again when they already have your product with the PayPal fee? And that's just not right. And here at Jack Monroe Incorporated, or whatever we are, um, thankfully, brought to you by Cool Stuff, Inc. And because Cool Stuff, Inc. is a cool place for gamers and for people that value your hard-earned work, hero clicks, and money, they don't stiff you with that PayPal fee. They send friends and family when they already have the product because why would you need to, why would you need to stiff me with a fee when you already have the product? Anyways, Cool Stuff, Inc., they get They get it. And you know what? That's why the Jack Monroe campaign is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. And so is this program. You see, you can get cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And remember, get all the money that you're entitled to when you sell your hero clicks. Don't get stiffed by some troll. Instead, get some cool stuff. Hey, thanks, Jack. Really appreciate that. You uh, were a little angry there for a bit, but I get it. I get it. We are entitled to our money for our hard-earned hero clicks. Thank you so much, Jack. Uh, joining me, like always, in the studio. Uh, no, clo- you, yeah, Jack. Yeah, you can close the door. Yeah, no, you're good. You're, we'll do. We're gonna. We're gonna do the show now. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, Simeon. Uh, is of course joining me my my co-host Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? The Dial H four Hero Clicks champion, the billion clicks, Bruce. Sorry, I know you said you missed that last week, so we have to get we have to get it all for you here, man. How's it going, Simeon? Yes. Yes. Ah, cower before me, peasant. Um, mm. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I was on the phone with J.G. Wentworth because... Oh, sure. It's my money, and I need it now. Uh, no, no, no. Sure. Uh, but yeah, friendly reminder, if you didn't catch our episode, whichever one it was that we talked about it, um, January 1st, I believe, all PayPal transactions uh, that are goods and services... If you hit over six hundred dollars in a single year, you will have to file taxes on those uh, things. So I don't remember the exact details, but we definitely did an episode on it, and uh, yeah, did, yeah. essentially, anyways, in, yeah, in trade groups and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it is important. So if you're selling your hero clicks. just be reminded that there is one company that pays you goods and services, and they're the worst. Um, and then there's one company that's a good company uh, that pays you uh, friends and family. And they're a thousand times better. And that is coolstuffink.com. Uh, anyways, Simeon, what made you happy this week, my man? Ooh. What made me happy this week was I got some new boots. These are right. they're Carolina built for work boots. Uh, they've got an eight inch heel. Or not eight, heel. Wow. That eight inch make heel. Me, that would make me Whoa. really tall. <laughs> Simeon, you're finally average height. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I got them lifts. Uh, no, they've got an eight-inch. Uh, what do you call that? Like ankle protector, the the part of the boot that comes up over the ankle. And, oh, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it goes yeah, over it's your eight ankles. inch. Yeah, yeah, I get not it. the heel. Um, <laughs> wow. Now I want to. I kind of want a pair of eight-inch heels now, though. Uh, 
<laughs> no, I got a new pair of boots and uh, with the winter months coming, you know, I wasn't sure. I took a chance on these Carolina boots. Haven't had a pair of those before. I used to rock the Timberland Pros because mm, I'm a fancy you're a boy. You're Tim's guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I tried these new Carolinas and uh, dang, they're warm. Like we've had oh, like good. some 30 degree mornings and my feet are like steamy, sweaty. Oh, really? I will have to are get these, thinner um... socks. Are these steel toe or like safety toe or anything? Composite, or... yeah. Well, I think that's better. Honestly, I don't. I, think I prefer composite. Steel, yeah, uh, keeps your feet way cold because it's metal. Yeah, obviously, well, so. the thing with the steel toe, and this is you know for for no reason, uh, it takes steel a while to get cold, but then once it does get cold, it is impossible mm. to warm it up. Like, yeah, you can sit in a truck for an hour, and your foot will start sweating, but the steel toe will stay cold. It's it's rough. Yeah. Ouch. Um I yeah, getting new shoes is nice. Yeah, you're new like, boots oh, scooting. Yeah. Especially yeah. I mean these boots boots are made for working, not walking, so it's a good way to be. They're definitely not made for um, walking. They make yeah. it very hard to walk. <laughs> Don't fall <laughs> off a billboard, please. I need you, bro. I had to well, they like didn't a, have my size, weird, so I, I had need to get you. three sizes larger, so now I do like the clown like oh my gosh. style thing. Um, um, um. Yep. <laughs> With the eight inch Any, heel. Anyway, with the eight inch heel, yeah. Talk about absolutely annihilating your ankle when you try to walk if you have like three sizes too big and an eight inch heel. Anyways, what made me happy this past week was well, the reason I missed last week's episode was due to Halloween. So I uh, mean, a friend dressed up and we did uh, like 80s fitness people, and that was really fun. And we went down to Bellevue, Nebraska, around Simeon's neck of the woods there. Yeah, and yeah. we did this thing called Tree Rush. It was like these balance obstacle course things that you were like hooked up to a sort of zip line, but you couldn't like zip through some of these obstacle courses. And you just sort of had to like do this weird balancing thing all the way up in the air um, while you're totally safe. Obviously, you're clipped onto the line, but um, it was pretty cool. It was like it was just fun. Yeah. And like some of them were like tough. Oh, my gosh. We were using like a ton of like foot balance to upper body strength to not like fall over and whatever. Like obviously, you'll, you'll be caught. It'd be really difficult for some of these obstacles to try to scooch across. Um, like you couldn't really phone it in, especially on like the hardest one. So they were all named they after have birds. A, a double um, black diamond trail. They they had a uh, black. They had, I think it was maybe yeah. It was, they did have one black one. It was Nighthawk. And so the entire time, uh, my friend decided to uh, skip out halfway through. They were like, "Yeah, I ain't gonna do this. My arms are noodles." Um, and to be fair, like my like arms were burning like my grip strength was just like yeah. almost non-existent by the end it was tough it was really tough so you know if i knew someone who like climbed tall things i'd be like man they must be in great shape but i don't know anyone anyone that would do that it probably looks really sad so, definitely no one that's in um, great shape no. definitely no one that's in great shape well you know <laughs> i would definitely have respect for someone that does that but i can't think of anyone who i would respect so Definitely not, you know, use him. No, I'm just, I'm just messing you. I actually, I actually was like, uh, you know, I can see how Simeon might not be scared of being this high up because I, I do feel completely safe with at least what they have. I don't know. I don't know what you have, but I do feel pretty safe uh, up there. And we'll say one thing. I did not like the repelling, the, the just jumping straight down. Oh Uh, yeah. That took me a second to like unmind mess myself to just jump because yeah. I was like trying to pull on it and it like it was like really fast when I would pull on it. But I'm like, no, oh, when I jump, it's going to catch me and slow down, but it's going to be fast for a second or whatever, you know, and I just like, oh, it took a lot. And I was just like trying to like work up the courage and do it. And I'm like, you know, what would Captain America do? I'm like, he would jump without a parachute. And I'm like, well, I am also not <laughs> Captain America and it is like 100 foot up in the air. Um, But still, anyways, so it was really fun. Hey, and then, Tommy, you uh, made sure to check the cable over there, right, for the repelling? <laughs> Why? No one's on that course. And then just hear uh, Calder screaming uh, in the distance. Thump, yeah. Smack the ground. But yeah, uh, but while I was on like the super hard like Nighthawk course, um, I was like, Night- Nighthawk, fact. Nighthawk's real name is Kyle something. I thought of it then. I thought of it at the time. But Dick it's Grayson? Whatever. Richmond. It's Kyle Richmond. 
Oh. Nighthawk. Nighthawk's the the guy that used to be able to you couldn't improve your combat values at all. Oh, you're talking um, Marvel Night, Nighthawk. Okay. Nighthawk. Yeah. Nightwing is a decent. Oh, character. that's right, because he throws. Anyways, uh, it's so like so that made me happy, and then I am now in the musical Elf. That's been really busy, but we started uh, practice these last two weeks, and that also made me really happy. So, getting excited. Also, uh, Mike Palmer, your folks player, is in Die Hard, the musical, over in Wakefield. So, that's really cool. I will sadly miss it, but I think people should go see that, because that sounds cool. But anyways, that is what made me happy this week. Die Hard, the musical. No, um, I've done a couple of those obstacle courses. They are quite a bit harder than what I do, because I walk on like a one foot wide to three foot wide depending on the structure uh deck so i i have like an actual surface to walk on and a lot of those are like well you get a balance on this piece of wood that is loosely hanging here hope that you like have a lot of forearm strength because you're mostly going to be just like carrying yourself across this cable (sighs) that's Uh, really what it is yeah yeah. (laughs) wouldn't it be awesome though to like I don't know. I think it'd be awesome to work at those places and you just get there like an hour early and go through that like hard course, get your workout in, be in great shape. And just like, yeah. Oh man, definitely. Like I, like no joke when I was telling you my like forearms and even like my biceps and like stuff like that, like the entirety of my arms and shoulders were just burning like on some of those. I was like, this is like, like I'm just going across like monkey bars, but the monkey bars can move up and down. Like it's yeah. hardest part is that nothing is stable. It's all goosey goosey moving on cables and whatever else. That's the really hard part. You can't just whatever. But anyways, it was really fun. It was it was super cool. And if you know, I think we have a weight limit. But if you can try to find ones near you, I think everybody should go check. I think at the very least, uh, your kids would really like it. Because like you know, little little kids, they they're like way easier to move themselves around because they don't weigh anything yeah. barely. So I think they would really get a kick out of it. Um, but yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the news. Really quick news, guys. Eternals has a new release date. Uh, not the movie. Uh, the hero clicks. Set. The hero clicks set is now slotted for November twenty fourth of. 2021 so uh cool 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 we get it get it after the movie so now instead of like anticipation towards the movie now it's a little ways after also i don't know if we talked about it on the show but i did get an email from WizKids. by i meant like everybody on their email list got an email that had all the figures for the set so it looks like we're probably getting two of each eternal and the chases are going to be this one dude who's all like like black and scaly right. and like, like kind of weird the bad looking, guy. like monster guys. Yeah. And then there's one who is a same sculpt as somebody else. I don't remember who, but then it's a clear yellow look, which is I assume it, is like Unimind. Cersei so I assume something? it's like it Cersei looks female. Somebody. Whereas the, it looks female. Yeah. I the old hair. Unimind we have is like, I don't know, ambiguous. It's just, yeah, like, just it's all a bald and looks like yeah. someone in like a green morph suit, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, that is it. That is what we got. Um, I do believe. I mean, Alex showed us a trait. He said he could got permission to share this. Does that mean we it is on it? Facebook? Yeah, it is on Facebook. All right, yeah. cool. So, anyways, uh, they have a trait called Legend, uh, Legend of the Past. So, I think every Eternal is going to have this trait. When an opposing character would move adjacent, you may roll a d6, and it is a may. Um, five through six, that character can't move into any squares adjacent to blank this turn. So pretty simple trait it's nifty it's not really make or break might not make them really that good it's just sort of like different hyper time is all it is it just sort of makes your opponent think a little bit is all it is all it does um it's not that great honestly it's worse than other characters abilities that are already in the game right now yeah after Um, playing against the um world's finest kc chases i really want that level of like figure back like games yeah wonder woman with a she's got a 13 printed with combat reef or uh close combat expert so top dial she's a 14 for like five Ooh, for, hoo, hoo, i don't baby. know how many points she is but those are some real big boy stats right there yeah and like the empire the chases. kc team ability uh plus like their shared trait across the board yeah is real cool the, no combat yeah yeah but anyways that's the eternals i don't care to talk that much about it but simeon what do you think are you gonna buy any of this eternals movie set at all uh i haven't seen the movie 
Uh, I still haven't seen Shang Chi um, to pronounce it as they do. Uh, I yes. still haven't seen that, so I should probably get caught up with like my Marvel stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't know. I think just because it is a movie set, I will try and get at least like the commons, which yeah. I'm assuming all the commons are the Eternals. I don't and know. Like all the rares are also movie the sets are like kind of expensive, even to pick up the commons. You know, three four dollars a figure. That's true. A secondary market. If not, it's like five dollars straight up just to buy a little pack. Like. Not a big yeah. fan of that. Um, no. Yeah. I got to say, the only way I'm going to go see the movie, the only reason I'm going to see the movie is because I've talked with people about it a little bit. And I do. So fun fact about this director, uh, she did a movie based on my cousin. It was called The Writer, um, uh, Brady Jandrew. And so that was pretty cool. So she did do actually a movie based on someone in my family. She also, so like that took place in South Dakota, obviously. And then so does Nomadland, I believe, is something she also directed. So the only reason I would go see the movie is to support the director. Um, but part of me was like, I don't want to give any money to the Eternals. I hate the Eternals. Um, they're so stupid. They're so dumb. I was thinking I might, you know, this might be a movie that I, arr, you know, wink, wink, arr, arr, you know, because I'm like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sit through it. I don't, I don't want to like have to give it my full attention and not be on my phone some of the time. I don't want to give money to like, not that Marvel's going to be like, oh, call it and give us his $10. Yeah. We're financially what will, ruined. What will Disney ever uh, do? Yeah. It's, it's more the principle of the thing that I don't want, you know, people that don't deserve my money to get it type of deal. But I, she did direct a movie that starred my cousin, which is pretty darn cool. So I will go just to support the director herself. Um, and that would be it. Anyways, yeah. listener questions. This is going to pseudo be the bulk of the episode. Uh, we have quite a lot of listener questions. So we have some cool ones regarding legacy cards a little bit. We did. I don't know if we talked about this on the show either, I guess, Simeon. This could have been also in news here. But did you see the legacy cards they chose for Empire? Oh, and Game Trade like, Magazine, yes. Game Trade Magazine. Uh, Terrible pictures. You can barely make out what they say. Um, yeah. But yeah, let me try to actually find Daredevil it. Daredevil Agent of yet. S.H.I.E.L.D. is one. Daredevil that, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. That, of course, old. being from What If. <sighs> yeah, uh, What If legacy card. So bad. Yeah. Yeah. The what if um, the whole set the the problem with that one for me is like I do thing. indeed have that Daredevil, but I've oh, never you? once played it because the legacy card I don't think it's makes just it better. So I hate, bland. I hate to say it. Yeah, it's such a bland figure. I'm I'd rather play me. any like Agent of Shield or any Daredevil other than that. Uh, it does not look like he has. Yeah, he doesn't have any of the. Le dialed her legacy cards up, even though I think some people could sort of make out what some of them said. Uh, there's Daredevil. There's like a really a Golden Age pre carded Mockingbird, and then the Captain America they chose. Gosh, makes me so mad. So quick rant about the Cap they chose. Uh, they chose Ultimate's rookie Captain America. So yeah, number one, not iconic, not an iconic choice. If you would have chosen at the very least Infinity Challenge. Maybe the LE from there, because we don't have a lot of World War II Captain Americas with the Triangle Shield. So, like, that would have been really cool. Um, or, of course, Hammer of Thor. Or, you know, there's tons of iconic Captain Americas. There's You could have chosen the one from 10th Anniversary, because guess what? We don't need to remake the Rookie from uh, Ultimates, because we already have a remake of the Ultimates Captain America. The 10th Anniversary Captain... The entire 10th Anniversary set, for people that don't know... Uh, they took dials and that, that already existed, and they basically kind of made them slightly newer, slightly better. So if you look like back to back, just you go to the Ultimates Captain America and you look at the 10th Anniversary Captain America, they both start with ESD. On the second click, they get impervious. They go on to flurry out Witlid or like whatever, leap climb, defend out Wit or something like that. They, all, they have basically the exact same power set and dial layout. So they've not only have they already remade the Ultimates Captain America, they could have used the better version of that figure just stat wise and then made it even better off of that. Instead, no, they go back to an old, terrible Ultimates Captain America and then just give him a legacy card for a figure they've already technically remade. Absolutely uh, blows my mind. We could have had the Captain America, any of the cap chases from, I guess they haven't really done a chase yet, but they could have done uh, the Captain America from the Captain America set with the awesome wall shield bounce mechanic thing. That would have been really cool. Like, that's a really awesome dynamic sculpt. 
They could have done the Captain America from Avengers Assemble. Like, that dude is not worth 150 points. It wasn't really worth 150 points when he came out either and made him better. They could have done the Captain Americas from Age of Ultron or both really good classic-looking Captain Americas. Like, there were so many cap choices, and they chose a figure they've already remade once and i'm like you've got to be kidding me it was <laughs> it was just sad it made me i mean oh they could have done a uh, ultimate's cap from the avengers set even though it's like a terrible terrible sculpt or the captain american bucky okay i doubt they'd ever do a duo but like still i could rant for hours for of all captain americas that was the one you should not have chosen i would have taken any of the chaos war captain americas and they were all bad you know over this guy because he's already been remade once so why why um I actually yeah, forgot. Wizards, I have this really issue of uh, Game Trade Magazine with me. Is there? Oh, really? Yeah. Is there any uh, any text that you can't read that you would like to read? Oh, I can't read any of the text on that thing, dude. It's so small. Not any I of the mean, pictures I saw. Go ahead, flip Simeon. through and find it real quick. And just make sure it is yeah. it is Daredevil Agent Shield Ultimate's rookie cap, and then some weird Mockingbird, right? Like those are the ult the legacy cards. I think that I don't think there's those any other are ones. so I'm not sure which ones we got online, but yeah. So uh, we also have Hawkeye from an oh, Avengers yeah. set. We have Joe Fixit from, of course, the Incredible Hulk oh, yeah. set. Uh, Namor from the Secret Maybe? Invasion or something. I I can't tell. I can't make out like? that. Uh, he's holding a trident. Do you have any blue on his base? No, he's holding a trident. He's Goodness black gracious. with like a black vest. Black pants, black, black vest. vest. Black pants, black vest. That is not going to be Secret Invasion, I don't think. I think that might be... Uh, Yeah, I guess. Does he have... Oh, sorry. Does he have any brown on his base? Excuse me. Yeah, he's standing on like a little rock. And that is the Secret Invasion one. Sorry, I was thinking of a okay. different one that I blew. So the uh, Secret Invasion one is actually kind of an iconic pick for Namor. So I will say that is a f good pick right there. Yeah, then uh, Scarlet Witch was the only other one that we didn't know. Oh, which Scarlet Witch from Avengers or which one? Uh, it's got like a four, the four logo. So I'm guessing Fantastic Forces or something. I mean, yeah. if we want to do iconic Scarlet. probability control pieces, the cheapest prob Avengers ever yeah. had was that Scarlet Witch for 35 points with prob barrier. But, yeah, I'm uh, not sure which one it is. Uh, okay, does she have like a hex magic thing above her head? Yeah, like so it's, it's one of the REV ones. Um, either 35, 49, or 62 points originally. Ooh, there is a 35 other point Scarlet Witch, but she's Brotherhood of Mutants and Mystical. Um, prob Stealth, 10 range, though. Oof. Yeah, the 10 range prob. Still, the super rare Avengers Scarlet Witch is better in every way. Like, even with the eight, only 8 range, she has flight, she's 35 points, she just has better keywords. She also has Avengers in accordance with the Brotherhood of Mutants and Mystical, so it just makes her makes her better. Um, so anyways, yeah. the, the captain America, it appears that he's got the defenders team ability as a trait. Okay. Um, That's I mean, mean. his first trait, the Avengers initiative, maybe it's Avengers team ability. I can't really tell. It looks more like defenders, but could be Avengers. Uh, then he's got close combat expert and free, make a close attack as a trait. Uh, okay. All right. Yes. Sideline active when a friendly character something something friendly character might like require a keyword or something of fifty points or more is KO'd. You can generate Captain America from your sideline, uh, and he is on click five, I believe it says. So not sure what that click looks like, but maybe it's okay. So Here's the only bad thing. At the very least, he is an 11 for 4 top dial with close combat expert, which is cool. Um, but he's still, you know, a 16 defense and for only three clicks. He has a 16 on his first click and then his last two. And then he's 15 and 14s for four clicks. So his average defense is 15 for the dial. Uh, he has defenders, which is great because you're going to need another defender to give him anything good. Um, and then he has charge for two clicks. He like that free make a close attack is pretty solid, but like once again for seventy two points, unless they cut him down to at least fifty, he's got to be at least fifty to be somewhat usable. Because then he's you know seven clicks. I mean even fifty is rough. The free attack is nice, but I mean, yeah, like not an iconic Captain America. I do like the sculpt. You know, it is a cool sculpt with the raised shield and everything. But like 
even I think Armor Wars was better because at the very least he starts with Impervious versus the whole pushing to it, which he can't push anymore. So that's just crappy that he has it on his second click, you know? So, like, there's no point. Um, yeah, at the very least, I think getting an Armor Wars Captain America would have been way, just way better. 100% yeah. way better. Yeah. Anyways, I agree. Yeah. Not, uh, not a good Captain America pick. Honestly, I, I'm hoping that they're... Is- Okay. They're reining in like the legacy card stuff because so far, what is it? Has it been just like Morgan Le Fay that was the only thing close to being competitive? Uh, I mean, Destiny, a 20 point prop oh, sure. piece that's coming back is solid, right? Like, cheapest yeah. prop she in the actually, game. Yeah, she got because she also has super Built senses and now. she can have like cool. defended values onto her if she's adjacent. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that is Empire. You know, I I really like legacy cards. I just wish they would pick characters I cared about. I mean, they, I like they've the chosen a character it. I care about. Um, can you read what his does at all? See what his, uh, his shenanigans are all about? Oh, man. If not, it's fine. I'm not the biggest Joe Fix-It fan here. Um, but that's uh, him, like, doing his weird little, like, double kick jump thing. Yeah. Like, weird little, it looks like... more like he's, like, landing than... Oh, okay. He's going to fall on his butt? It looks super weird. <laughs> any of the Thor's hammer Captain America's would have been great oh, I'm just looking at all of them I'm just like okay hey. the new Fantastic Four is his first rate he has passenger one. Oh, that's the normal ability they all have and then it says but only to carry he's, character with yeah, the Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four keyword when you move once per turn yeah. yeah yeah he's got the that then he's got a special speed that's leap climb uh, when he does is it and given a move something I'm guessing he can make an attack and then his damage power range something with something it is I cannot stress how much this is like printed so tiny range 6 with 2 lightning bolts is his special damage it is printed the legacy cards are printed smaller than a quarter Ooh, on really? The, in the game yeah. trade magazine, yeah. So I've nice. got like the normal images of like the actual figures from the set, but then the legacy cards are like a quarter of the size of those. It's Ugh. insane how small that stuff is. Like they didn't put them in there for you to read them. They put them in there to like garner hype for like the set, <sighs> clearly. Uh, yeah. But yeah. man, <laughs> it's so hard to read. I don't know why they make it so small. It's just stupid. I mean, yeah, they don't have a whole yeah. lot going on, I guess. Really Can you see the back of any of the dials or just the front part nope. of the card? None oh, of the shoot. backs of the legacy cards, so you don't get to see oh, well. any point values. <laughs> also lobby, a mistake. Um, but, you know, they did put all of the figures that we've already seen taking up, like, the majority of the page. So that's sure. great. That's nice. How yeah. great of them. All right, Simeon. Let's go ahead and move on into the community section and answer some questions. There are dozens of us. So I think this is probably going to take us the longest, which is why we'll do it first. But the Uncanny Cause, he's a local at my venue, uh, asks us for our top 10 best figures in modern. So a lot of these, for me anyways, are going to have asterisks because they're only good if you also have a full sideline or another one of them or a team built around them. Like they themselves are like the really good part. but It's only if you have all the extra stuff. That fills them out. Otherwise, them by themselves, not that great. Sure. I'm just going to run down my list really quick. I'm, you know, see, I'm just going to try to make this quick, you know. Yeah. We'll see. I, have, I imagine but we'll have at least probably five that are the same. Five crossing over. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say number one is Jason Wingard. Big asterisk, though. You have to have the commissioner, Lex Luthor, Isaac. Captain Marvel, whatever else for pogs and stuff, right? But I think number one is Jason Wingard. I think he's super strong. Uh, these are in no particular order because I just kind of, as I thought of them, I wrote them down. Number two is Doom Annihilating Conqueror, just for the ability to make Latveria theme teams. Once again, huge asterisk. You need to have other Dooms to swap into, and you need to have the stuff for a Latveria theme for him to be actually good. Otherwise, he would be one of the worst figures in modern, honestly, but because of what he can make happen, one of the best. Uh, number three, I got the Wonder, Wear, Wonder Woman, Wonder Wear, uh, Wonder Woman Super Rare Flash. Uh, slight asterisk, you're going to want at least two. But not as big of a deal as the other ones. Uh, number four and five are Professor X and Magneto. 
from X-Men Rise and Fall. Once again, asterisk there. You need to have all of the good figures to swap teams and stuff into Exodus and Jean Grey's and Dark Phoenixes and whatever else. And, you know, and for Hellfire, Blackhearts and Jasons and whatever else. Um, number six, I got Sky Tyrant. Number seven, I've got All Caps Doom, because I think he is just solid by himself without being on sideline. I think he's pretty solid. Number eight, I've got Dark Phoenix. Number nine, I have Commissioner. And number 10, I have Emperor Gladiator. That is my top 10. Sadly, these are all mostly <laughs> expensive, but Simeon, why don't you go through I'll, your list? I'll go through the then. ones that matched. So okay, I'll do those ones matched. first. So uh, I also had Emperor Gladiator. Okay. Uh, I also had Sky Tyrant. Okay. I also had that super rare flash from Wonder Woman. Okay. And then I also had Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. So I I guess so mine are slightly off the the beaten track or <laughs> beaten track. Uh only four crossing over. Yeah, I'm I was surprised. I thought it was gonna yeah. be more, but I guess looking at it now, I'm like, oh, these are like the things that I would play competitively. Uh I think I'll go like most what I think is most competitive to least. Um, So number one, like not counting the ones that I already listed. uh, So technically number five would be molecule man uh, for 30 points, just ridiculous amount of barrier. Um, Then number two or six, I guess would be black leopard. I think fantastic four theme teams only get better Mm -hmm. with like the new sets. And I think black leopard, remains like a very viable swap in piece and i think he's worth the uh the prime slot on your sideline or on your like main force because man it can really nerf some stuff um then we'll go number three or seven would be green lantern the super rare so i i haven't seen it played super competitively but i still just can't believe two stop clicks with a 19 defend at top. There's just no way that, and like the, the whole construct thing, there's no way that green lantern doesn't like fit some builds. He's just super good. Um, and like the alternatively, you could also use like chip and some of the other options, but this particular Hal for 75 <laughs> points, two stop clicks and the stop clicks are in bone. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's a lot to get through. Um, then I have Blackheart just all by himself. I think Blackheart's a real solid figure. I think you could probably play a team with four Blackhearts and then a sideline of Hellfire Club guards and yeah. probably do pretty good. Uh, I'm not saying that you'd win anything, but you'd probably at least do okay. Uh, they're pretty hard to chew through, and, yeah, that's about all. Um then I've got, let's see, which ones have I not done? Oh, I think I've only got one left. So Blackheart, Emperor Gladiator, Sky Tyrant, Green Lantern, The Flash, Molecule Man. Oh, uh, Emperor Vulcan. So this is from House of X, the Rare Prime Emperor Vulcan. So um, two stop clicks with invulnerability, per, uh, traded pulse wave, and then traded can reduce pen damage and protected pulse wave. Uh leadership for the first four clicks just a really solid figure for whatever point value you play him at uh but at 175 points it's a real hard figure to deal with without some specific kind of uh i don't know work around because protected pen damage with impervious is probably one of my most frustrating combos uh you can get around like super senses and shape change but it's like even if you hit him and he misses impervious, he still reduces by two no matter what. So, um, And then finally, uh, I think probably the most underlooked competitive piece is got to be Asuka. For 40 points, you get the submission hold right off the bat. Uh, you get to increase it by plus one for each Asuka lock your opponent has. Uh, you get to, every time you KO a character, you get to increase one of your combat values and then bottom dial on click, uh, the last click you have flurry with a 10 attack and an 18 defense combat reflexes and your opponent can't shoot you. I think Oscar's probably like top tier. I don't know why I don't see it played more. No comment. Just let that, let that sink in. Pretty good figure. Pretty good figure. 
Yeah, it's not though. Um, awesome, cool. I'm glad we. She was also the only figure missing from our last month's giveaway when I gave away Simeon and I's teams oh. from uh, Extreme, Extreme Rules. Extreme Rules. Wow. Yeah, gave away our Extreme Rules know. teams for the one year anniversary. So no, no, neither of us played Oscar. Wow. We played. Asuka. To be fair, did no, even not? You even Asuka? in WWE, she's pretty solid. I was going to say she's not as good in like mixed universe, but even then she's pretty solid. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and jump over. Do some quick Malcolm questions here. Uh, he writes in, which hero clips has an amazing sculpt, but a really bad dial? Uh, I'm going to say King Shazam is the first one that comes to mm, mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go. I with wouldn't say movie. really bad, but it has a exploitative yeah. dial, which makes it kind of bad. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. Also, just like stats to sculpt, pretty pretty. Lame. That too, yeah, that too, yeah. It has a really great sculpt and fairly lacking dial. Uh, I'm gonna go with War Wheel from the Superman uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, that is, it's one of like my favorite sculpts. And wow, what a garbage piece to play. One you of like think the it worst would be. retaliators yeah. ever. It is so bad. It is really bad. All right. Um, next up, with legacy cards in mind, how would you fix the dials you picked above? Well, obviously, what's his face does not need a legacy card. He just came out. Um, so I'm gonna think of a different person with a with a great sculpt, but absolutely terrible. Oh, easy. Um, I wouldn't say it's a great sculpt, but a character I would like to get a legacy card would have to be Zombie Galactus because he was never really Ooh. that good. Yeah. So I think we would honestly. Make it easy. Lose the whole. Still give him straight t- traded steel energy, but just let him start on those good clicks for four hundred points. Yeah. Simple change. Um. I don't know if he has any stop clicks, but I think he's got some nope, special I don't, powers I don't so. somewhere in there. Give him some stop clicks, Mister. Let's check out. Uh, Zombie Galactus. I believe yeah. his name is straight up. It is Zombie. Yeah, he has Zombie in the name of it. So yeah, let him start with his twenty speed, sixteen attack, and twenty one defense, and eight whatever. Uh, he doesn't have multi attack or anything. It's like that's fine. He does have, yeah, he does have four special defense powers near the end. I would just add the word stop. Okay, he's a thousand points. He's not four hundred. He's a thousand points. And then he normally starts with a twelve, thirteen, twenty seven for a thousand points, and it's pulse wave, not pen blast. Pen blast is arguably better uh, when you have seven damage now, especially since you have ten range anyways. Uh, yeah. For a thousand points, and then even for all of his other lower point values, and even for two hundred, yeah, just make those last four all stop clicks. Yep, I would just yeah. do that, and then he would be a beast. Yeah, right. Basically, make those last four all stop clicks and make his top dial the green starting line, not the red starting line, and get rid of the dumb healing thing. Oh, and make his. Uh, oh, actually, he actually does have multi attack. Uh, still, it's fine. Um, for a thousand points, he should be actually a threat. Um, Give him, no. uh, yeah, make his, give him, uh, instead of I hunger, give him the normal virus traits or whatever, I think, too. Make him, like, actually, like, a good thousand point figure. Anyways, Simeon. I've played that. I, I think the Zombie Galactus for sure needs it. On, like, the yeah. lower dial. And, man, does he go down fast. Like, it does. It's sad. It's, it's ridiculously sad. And his stats just drop, like, well, you're already, you're already playing him at, like, low dial, but... Yeah, like one hit and I mean, his stats drop. Two, um, you're playing 200 points for a figure, and he starts with a 10 attack. Yikes! Yikes! Anyways, go yeah. ahead. But he he needs big. Legacy. He's real big though. He's, he's real big. He intimidates your opponent. Um, so how to fix War Wheel? You would have a retaliation that's traded where you place and then choose a row or column of the map and ram, and you don't take unavoidable damage. That would be, like, your whole thing, except when ramming, you would do, like, printed value or printed damage value. So, like, bottom, like, whatever the bottom uh, damage value is, like, two, three, whatever, doesn't matter. But then top, you're, like, ramming for, like, six or, like, five, you know. You're doing actual damage for that high thing. And then I also think that it could, uh, I don't know, since it's a vehicle, you could probably carry a lot more people because it's like a giant war machine thing i don't know there's there's a lot i think the biggest thing is you'd have to fix all the stats because it's it's just kind of really bad stats to be honest um let me let me double check here oh yes for 400 for 400 points you get a, a 12 for four which yeah it's fine 
Uh, the the current colossal retail that it has is you give it a power action. Let's see from the character last turn. You place War Wheel in any four squares in the same rows or columns that contain both all of War Wheel and the chosen character. So the problem is like if the character that's attacking War Wheel or a friendly is at any kind of diagonal and not directly in war wheels path already like if they are an absolute fool while playing the game then they can get colossal retaliated Uh, the dial instantly drops to an 11 attack on clicks two and three and then a 10 Uh attack on clicks four and five still in the 400 point like range because then the, (laughs) the next one the next point value uh is 275 where it finally bumps back up to 11. But, mm. man, uh, the dirigible jo- drops actually like a cool power, though. Uh, it's just, again, just like Galactus, for 400 points, I'm going to need a stop click at each starting line instead of the bottom one. Because if my opponent, like, you know, outwits me, for, f- like, my 400-point figure, they outwit my invincible and blast me, all the way down to my stop toughness. I'm going to be a little bit annoyed. Yeah. Stop tough. Ugh. It's just like a lot of 17s. I'm looking at it. A lot of 17s. A lot of 10 attack. And then that 100 point is all nines, basically. Yeah. So bad. Yeah. There's one click for 100 points. Ugh. There's technically two clicks of 10 attack. And then there's five clicks of nine attack for a 100 point figure. That's so bad. It's weird that for 100 points, it starts with the 4 damage, and also at 400 points, it starts with the 4 damage. Yeah. Not saying it should start with, like, an 8 damage or anything crazy, but I mean... I mean, 5, five six, or 6, something. yeah. Yeah. Dirigible. It's, yeah. Dirigible. <laughs> dirigible. It's kind of fun. Dirigible drop. It's kind of fun, at least, to say. Dirigible drop. Dirigible drop. Uh, <laughs> What else is Malcolm going here? Uh, which hero clicks has terrible sculpts, but an amazing dial? Ooh, Unimind. That's the yeah. one that comes like first mind. Absolutely garbage sculpts, boring. You know, little crazy booger man. good dial, yeah. crazy good dial. Um, um vulture. That's yeah. cool. crazy Vul- good dial. Vulture, uh, Captain cool. Marvel from Captain America. Probably one of her more yeah. boring sculpts compared to like there were some where she's just standing. You know, like sure. it's it, she's blasting a little bit, but yeah, it's not but great. Like, for how good it is, the sculpt is not yeah. the best sculpt that True. she's had. She definitely should have had Chewy on her sculpt as well. It just made would have made sense. Right. Like that'd have been yeah. really cool. A little flavor there. Um, yeah, I think those are some solid choices. I mean, honestly, Emperor Gladiator. It's crossed arms floating. It's not yeah. an interesting sculpt. There's, there's a couple of Supermans that are the most generic looking it's just, Superman. They're but it also has like a because attack. we've all seen Superman a million times. They're all so like and all he does is he flies with his hands forward, he's got his hands on his hips, doing his little signature pose. It's just boring. You know, yeah. Like, there's only so much like you can do at the very least with like Spider Man. Like, same thing. No offense to you, Simeon, but like Wolverine. How many yeah. crouchy Wolverines with pop claws do we have? It's insane. Like, um, like that's why I probably Bob. like the scroll Wolverine the most because he's like on a tree the at best least. At what I or, like, do, Weapon X what Wolverine in his tank over into a over. position. Look even shorter than I am. <laughs> uh, then he says, "How would you fix the sculpts?" that you said above or which sculpts would you switch uh to fit that dial you said above so really quick uh because it, this fits this one more uh i like to switch out the mag the normal magneto like switch clicks with the zombie magneto because that zombie magneto is definitely more flavorful to magneto when the story is still human and trying to fight off the zombie horde and his tk deal of pen damage fits a little more and then we can just say his food and whatever traits are like will to live or some garbage like that, you know, um, versus virus infection and food and whatnot. But I like to switch that sculpt a lot uh, for Unimind. Well, Unimind is just a boring garbage character and people that like him are boring garbage people. So there's no fixing <laughs> Unimind. I'm just I mean, slated honestly, to be a loser forever. Honestly, like what that's like uh, if they tried to make the movie version of the Kree Supreme Intelligence you remember, like, when Captain Marvel meets the Supreme Intelligence, yeah. and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am Black what two. you imagine me to be. Oh, and that, I was like, yeah, no, that that's, 
that's kind of Galactus's thing. You are like a big head in a jar. That's what you are. Um, big jar. You're big jar head man. Yeah. I'm trying to, Luckily, I'm trying to... we didn't have to get that sculpt, um, whatever they would have made that out of. Uh, no. It would have um, just been the Captain Marvel, right? It would have been like, this is what Carol Danvers sees. Sculptor you see. Look, check it out. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Right, yeah. <laughs> this is what, it's just a little mirror. Like a, a um, 360 mirror. A marble. And if you will. that is all Malcolm has to say. So jumping over to the Discord here. Ooh, ah, questions for the show. Uh, Warburg Mark says, who would you pick? For Dark Beast's experiment, uh, Dark Beast is a bad figure. People that play him are bad. Should just play Exospecs or anything else instead. He's a waste of 70 points. Uh, that being said, someone with move and attack, I guess. Yeah. It's... So you're investing 70 points into giving a character a power for a turn. It's not a great tactic for most gameplay and then to get more of those research tokens assuming that's your plan is to get more you have to make attacks with dark beast which is not a great plan either because i think he's just like an 11 blades he's real uh, mad with a five like five movement charge so he's going five like it's gonna need you're gonna need something um the one thing that dark beast can bring to he's the at table least charge is at the very least, he's got some charge. I wish he started yeah. without wit. Oh, there's no reason for him not to start without wit. But yeah, no, he's at least a charge blade for reason. three. But like a charge blade's eleven for three is like a bunch of fifty point characters in the same set too, or forty point thirty point characters in the same yeah. set. So. Well, and they'll have to be at least fifty or less because that's what his experiments have to be. Sure. Uh, so no, like like Calder said, a move and attack for a character that doesn't have move and attack. Um, I would have said pulse wave a couple like months back, but that's no longer something that I really need on a team. Almost so a we're looking ago. like for an alpha strike because that's essentially all I can really bank on because the other thing is dark beast has to be adjacent to the character you're giving these powers to. So it's not like I can plan on him being next to somebody for like regen or something like that. Uh, so yeah, defensively it does nothing. Uh, damage power wise, I guess, you know, close combat expert or ranged combat expert are always fine stat modifiers. Are you going to pay 70 points to get that on your team? Probably not. Uh, so move and attack, precision strike, maybe pen sai. If you have a, I just can't imagine having a really good range attacker where I'm like, yes, this is the best range attacker I can think of, but I need pen sai. Um, all the really good ones already come with that, so yeah, I don't know. What a shame! What a shame! Yeah. Uh, next up here on we have Luke, Luke. Luke says a year and a half ago, Clix players never really knew who Maggot was, or Unimind, or heck, even Sky Tyrant. So, who are what are some C tier characters that you would love to see getting uh, the meta spotlight? He was like a Chase Doorman, perhaps a fifty point Darkhawk, maybe gives your whole team Mystics. Sadly, even someone who gives your whole team Mystics at 25 points is meta, oddly enough. And he's like, what about a Don't Die Two-Gun Kid? Ooh. Um, what's a C-tier character I want to see be meta? Uh, I mean, we can call him C-tier. Maybe he's not. He, he definitely was before he was in the TV show. But I want I want a meta John Walker. I'm, I very much want a meta John Walker really bad. Oh, sure. Really bad. Uh, I would have said, yeah, U.S. Agent is easily C or D tier, like comic book character before the show. But now, like even the normies obviously know who he is. But yeah, I would love a a meta U.S. Agent John Walker, um, a meta like Jack Flag or Free Spirit or a Free Spirit in general, like any Captain America like uh, sidekicks that aren't very known. Ah, oh, dude, a Rick Jones that's meta. They, we sort of got one, I guess. Yeah, I Technically, say, we did get chase, a meta Rick really? Jones. Yeah, the chase. But that, yeah. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of characters that are like kind of like out there that are meta. I Or that aren't meta. You know, that could be. That would be hilarious. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, a, uh, who's the guy? Who's the... He's in the member of the New Mutants, but he's like not actually a mutant. He's like a weird alien thing. But he like... He can turn into all sorts of stuff. You know? him He's like Warlock. Is that his name? He's like black and gold. It's like technology oh, looking guy. Doug Locke. War, is it Warlock? No. Nah, well, Warlock, like Warlock is the actual alien. And then yeah, Doug him. is the one that. Him. Yeah. 
Yeah, we haven't had a warlock since Wolverine and the X-Men, I think. Probably. Uh, yeah, Wolverine and the X-Men was the... Not the first one. We had one in Fantastic Forces that looks quite terrifying. And then, yeah, uh, Wolverine and the X-Men was 164 points. Oof. With a 10 Probably attack, not. 4 damage. Probably not worth it. And yeah. phasing for its top speed value. <sighs> Hope you like that phasing because from clicks 2 through 5, you don't have a speed power. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What a strange dial. This is probably, looking at this, this is probably one of the worst dials I've seen. It probably does something cool that I'm not seeing because I'm not reading the traits and stuff, but... Must be. Yikes. Um, no, to go to rib off of Wolverine and the X-Men, uh, from the Wolverine and the X-Men uh, comic book, iBoy would be a really fun, interesting like okay. support character. Okay. Beak. Uh, we did get Glob Herman, so don't need that. Uh, but Glob, to be fair, Glob Herman should be, in my opinion, either much, much cheaper. It's 40 points, so much, much cheaper uh, by my standards would be like, I don't know, 20, 25. Um, or just like better offensively. I don't know. I just did not like Glob Herman. It seemed like a bad super rare for some reason. Yeah. That's, that's my okay. answer. All right, right on. Uh, next up, we have uh, his own Bill here, apparently. Uh, since I've been playing Heroclix, JLU to Empire. Uh, I think it's a little early to say JLU to Empire, but okay. Uh, Dr. Doom has been clicked 18 times. Wolverine, 14 times. And then he says Captain America 3. Let's just slow down there, buddy. Iron Man's been clicked like 7 at the very least, he's been clicked five times since then. So I think Captain America 3. No need, no need to throw Captain America up there. Just for stark contrast, we've barely gotten any Captain America figures. Even in the Captain America set, we only got three Steve Rogers. So we've been uh, over a year drought without any Captain Americas. It cuts me It cuts me deep. But we got 14 Wolverines, 18 Doctor Dooms. Uh, how often do you want to see your favorite characters clicked? Is it the more the better? Or at a certain point, do you want room saved for stuff that isn't made that often? So... I want my characters, my favorite characters to be clicked uh, every once in a while. So maybe twice a year, give me a Captain America, you know, just because I I want to play Captain Americas, but I've already played every single one from the Massive Evil starter and the Captain America set a ton of times. Same thing with the ones we have, like all the Caps in Modern, I've played way too many times and I'm just like, I don't want to be bored of the dial. So Give me a new version of that character so I don't get bored of the dial and tired of playing it. That type of deal, you know? So yeah. it's been over a year. I think uh, for any character, being over a year really... Okay, I shouldn't say for any character. For like characters that are well-known, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Wolverine, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, whatever, over a year is rough. It is really rough. Um, maybe DC is different because they only get made once a year. So I honestly don't need a Superman every, well, you never need a Superman ever. Cause he's the worst. Uh, but you don't need a Batman every year necessarily, but yeah, like just give it to me twice a year, a new version of this person, just so I don't get, you know, tired of the dials that I have. Cause I've been kicking around with these same cap dials for over a year now. And I'm only going to get one in empire. Technically three captain America ish characters with Bucky, Ricky Barnes, and then, Thanos and then a normal Steve. But yeah, Simeon, what how often do you think they should make um iconic characters and stuff? So that you like. Your favorite characters specifically. it's yeah, so my favorite being Wolverine. Like I, I do have other favorites, but the obvious pick with there would be Wolverine, which I believe that is why Bill included it there. Um I did not realize there's fourteen since JLU. God, uh, that's that's wild. nuts. But um I believe it. So my thing would be I'd always like one to be in modern regardless. That's like one one point of contention. I would always like to have a like one of my favorite characters in modern regardless of like how many they make whatever. Um but then my second thing would be I don't want multiples of like the same thing. So like Spider-Man is always going to be like super senses, like some version of super senses, some version of incap, some version of like charge or hypersonic that kind of stuff um 
Wolverine is almost always charge blades, either combat reflexes or some sort of like toughness and then regen in some form or fashion. Wolverine is a much harder character to make different each time. Uh, I think the super from Xavier school is probably the best version of Wolverine we'll ever get. Like that's a very good version of Wolverine. It, I would even say it's comic accurate to a certain degree. Um, yeah, but it's, it's hard to play casually because it's kind of mean to get like the full force out of it. Uh, but that being said, I would only want them to repeat characters within like the same uh, modern time period. If there was like a big comic event that made the character actually different, like behave differently or, you know, something changed to their powers. So like, for example, if Wolverine somehow accessed the speed force and became like speed Verine and started like, you know, flying around, cutting up ninjas at hypersonic speeds, then I wouldn't mind if they gave me a Wolverine that was like a blur with like claws, you know, like tornado claw thing, whatever. Yeah. That's an actual version that I don't get very often. Uh, when we got the horseman, why did I say it? like when we got the horseman? Horseman. Uh, when we got the horseman, that <laughs> centaur boy. Uh, no, when we got the Hulk and Sentry Horseman of Apocalypse, I was kind of annoyed that we didn't get a resculpt of that sweet Wolverine Horseman of Apocalypse because that's mm. a, one of my favorite like sculpts of Wolverine that we have. Um, and I guess, I don't know, two out of four ain't bad is what WizKids said about that. But no, um, if it's a different enough version, I'm fine with it. If it's like this Wolverine is slightly cheaper and crouches even lower than the previous one, then I'm like, why? Why will I? I will never play this. I'll tell you how many times I've played the X-Men Dark Phoenix Wolverine exactly once. And I've had it for, you know, almost two years now. But Simeon, uh, he can get so low. Years now. Yeah, he, he crouches Trudy, very Trudy low. Trudy got low, 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 From low. Uh, Rise and Fall, or not Rise and Fall, uh, House of X. I've played the Uncommon Wolverine like twice, and I have not yet played the Common Wolverine from that set. Okay. It just, you know... I don't need them because I already have like my staple versions for casual play yep. and they're not good enough to be competitive. So, and they're mm. not flavorful. They're just, they are what they are, which is like the filler piece to get new people. Kind of bad. Which is fine, I guess. Uh, Luke, Luke asks, fine. sorry, I was just going to skip ahead to the next one. My bad. If you need to, sorry, I didn't no, even catch you I was just there. grumbling about how it's fine. It's fine. Okay. I But I see what you mean, right? Because like, that's part of the reason that I can't like play any more of these Captain Americas because all the ones from the cap set, they kind of do the same thing. We got running shot. Some of them have impervious. Some of them have charge, whatever. And then they have living legend and like, that's it. Right. And then the ones, and then a lot of them are just like, they have running shot. They might have ESD. We got some kind of leadership and they all do the same thing. Like a lot of Captain Americas do this stuff, but I need at least some flavor, you know, where like how the ABPI Captain America has like a lot of flavor or like alternate takes. Like you said, like if you did horseman Wolverine, um, the infinity gauntlet Captain America, it's got some flavor. I think those versions you need one every two years, one where it's like a, yeah, some cool flavor for an iconic character is, is good. I think, I think that's solid. I don't need just only, cause you don't want to have only gimmick versions, right? Right. You don't want only like, uh, these are Wolverines, but none of them are actually original Wolverine. You have like Hydra Wolverine, X-Force Wolverine. Like I would like a normal blue and yellow or blue and brown, like yeah. classic costume. Like version I'll be of picking Wolverine. up the, as well uh, empire agents of shield wolverine for sure yeah that's cool it's a super nice rare, cool but, like, that's gonna version. be one that i make sure i get um what i won't be picking up is like i'm wolverine wolverine from empire set where he's like he's hey charge blades you see this blue and yellow outfit that means i'm the best at charge blades for 50 points because that's pretty much always his point next value. up uh luke 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 asks are we planning any year end stuff? Extra special seasonal wind out episode. We're calling the best and worst of last year. Uh, the last year. Top 10 favorite figures, best moments, biggest WTF moment, worst community outburst. I don't know about that one. Um, and he said awards, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Luke, we do a award show actually every single year. And we have people vote uh, in several categories like best range attacker, best close attacker, best main attacker, best secondary attacker, best support, best whatever. 
um, best also sculpt, vote best ourselves. overall, and then yeah, we ourselves vote. You know, worst figure overall for the year, and we do we do an award show like that at the end of the year. So that's normally is normally recorded last like week of December, and then it'll be up probably first of January or what last weekend of December. As far as like YouTube goes, our kind of end of the year special was uh sort of like hot ones i guess i think depending on where our editing is at we have two potential really funny youtube videos that can be end of the year specials probably the gameplay one with food is gonna be our end of the year special more so than the other one we're filming because that is a lot more editing to do that's about as specific i can be guys sorry um for those because yeah. i think part of it is going to be the surprise um but i, I think definitely say, one of them we're we are what yeah. uh 12 weeks away from our uh 400th episode yeah something we gotta like do something that. big for that so yeah like That's really so big. for 300 we did a live stream and kind of like yes. ask us anything i think we could we could roll that into some like b-roll footage and some blooper stuff i don't know uh make like a give four us our episode you know guys send us some ideas what do you want for our 400th episode what do you guys want to see you want to yeah. see more about Simeon and i do you want to see like a crazy long live stream where we play a bunch of games we'll just do a try to have yes we'll gosh please no 12 hours Ugh. of us just eating random food while talking to give us some hero clicks no related foods uh that'd be like oreos um it would be like turkey legs it would be like matter of any kind uh hero clicks related foods uh black panther is a hero clicks related food probably don't want to do that one um <laughs> so yeah i think uh, the zoo has <laughs> one available <laughs> yeah oh yikes uh alex lee and channer uh okay we're skipping that one we might answer that one on a patreon exclusive episode he asked us our best worst favorite patrons um i don't want to call any of them the worst because they all give us money so you're all good um he said real question though lowest point dials in all of hero clicks are way way back in golden age in the form of bystander pogs are there any one of them worth their single digit point values yes alicia any of them that have team abilities will always be worth their single digit points and uh, point value so like alfred uh, alicia masters simply because you can like wild card right so i think she is like less than 10 points alicia masters here um yeah she's five points and has a fantastic 14 ability yeah. Chills in the back. Give everybody on your all the wild cards, whatever. Fantastic Four, same thing. Alfred is like under whatever, and then he is uh, gives everybody Batman ally. Yeah, Alfred is six points. Gives everybody Batman ally. Um, and even then, I still think if you're gonna pay one point for a oh, what's that bog? It's an arrow character, right? It's like Red Arrow or something weird like that. It's like some little kid who's like a one point pog. You know what I mean, though, Simeon? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, point value one. Um, it's, it's killing me, but I'm just gonna click point value one. Leanne Harper. I know some Harper person is an error. Air, uh, this is like a little child. Never mind. Uh, Leanne Harper. Zero damage. Seven defense. Five attack. Four whatever. But a one point pog. Even then, this is well probably the cheaper the better. Uh, for mastermind fodder alone, this figure is like worth it, right? So, I think it's not until you get into the ones that are like weird ones right like is the zombie wasp is she worth her nine points or whatever no probably not but there are a handful of really really solid oh she's called jane of Dyne or something i'll tell you she's uh vengeful think, soul from the battle of the millennium Yu-Gi-Oh set oh yeah Definitely for five points is great five, oh no no it's vengeful. 50 Which soul? oh yikes so I'm thinking of a different one from the Yu-Gi-Oh set. Some of them Restless are okay. Soul is what I'm thinking of. So Restless Soul is a seven speed phasing with Empower. I think that yeah, five point power is super worth it. What did you was it? Vengeful, the vengeful Soul? Soul, yeah. Ooh, ah, with only super senses. I it's, mean charge it's not running bad shot if you can make with it blast graffiti. and exploit. It's just bad because it oh, scores your 50 opponent. Points, 50 points. One click. Ugh, ugh. That is, yeah, no, I see what you mean. That is rough. Um, but yeah, no, there's quick answer. Yeah, it's very much certain pogs are very easily worth it. Are like generic thug and like the dumb dumb Dugan pog and what and like Frenchie to champ and all that stuff. Are they worth it? No, 
but I mean like certain ones, yeah, because yeah. they're because they're good. Like I mean, just even how it, how it is for old old kind figures. of not so old much old recently, but Mudman extremely worth the twenty points or whatever he cost. Oh yeah, um, and that's a figure that I wouldn't mind. That's the one yeah, bystander he, I'd be okay with. He's real solid. A, uh, <laughs> Legacy card. Oh, no, don't bring me back there. I'd be cool with it. And those are all our questions from the Patreon. I, you know, this guy's probably a weird episode, but I hope you enjoyed it. We talked a little bit about some weird legacy cards, talked a little bit about figures. I was kind of negative this episode. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to try to bring you down or whatever, but uh, I got to yuck people's yum. I just, I got to. Anyone's happy about, you know, things I hate? Can't let it happen. Just can't let it happen. Anyways, yeah, I think that's pretty much the episode. So... Any shout outs? Oh, really quick, guys. Uh, next week, uh, I'm going to do another Master Mold event. So I'm going to try to get some footage from that for you on the YouTube. Uh, if not, stay frosty and whatever else, my friends. Simeon. Yeah. And if you're worried about frost, you should pick up some defroster from your local auto place. But if you're not worried about Frost and you just want some cool hero clicks or board games, you should check out CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find the coolest hero clicks singles and sealed products. And as well as, uh, let's see, let me look at this game trade magazine. What's something that's coming out here? Uh, Monster Fight Club miniatures going to be coming out uh, soon monster fight club miniatures oh yeah we got dinosaur like, world dinosaur island yeah. and dinosaur island rar and right all different uh board games tabletop games like i've said this before about like cool stuff inc um and i know like earlier today our friend jack went on a rant about how they are just like the best person to sell your miniatures to because they pay you if you want money they also have a 35 percent uh bonus if you get cool stuff inc credit which is really good but um I also I buy a lot of board games on Cool Stuff Inc. because uh so the villainous game, Marvel Villainous, apparently normally retails for like around fifty to forty five bucks. They had it on sale for twenty five, and right now it's still on sale, but it's for thirty two fifty right now, which is still like twelve something bucks off, right? So like they just have great board game sales. Like so if you're like you know a Marvel fan, which I assume a lot of you are, uh pick up Marvel Villainous for not quite, you know, 20-ish percent off here, 32.50 versus the uh 40 $45 price tag. And it was 25 bucks. They do a lot of day sales and stuff, which is good. They don't have a ton of um like really 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 great like hero click sales. Some they do. It's it's weird how sometimes they have like oh, really good deal on a hero hooks figure and it'll be like sold out right right away and I'll be like, "Ah, oh, dang, you know." But of course it's a good deal. Um but then they'll, they, I think honestly, their board game deals for if you also like board games are so good. Like they have such good board game deals, in my opinion. I really like them. So yeah, yeah. As someone who collects board games without playing them or any plan <laughs> of playing them, I sure uh. like. <laughs> Truly, I actually I really love board games, even though the majority of the ones that I own, I've only played like once or twice. If that, yeah. I currently have like four unopened ones because they sounded so fun. I'm just waiting for the right opportunity. We'll have a uh, Friendsgiving coming up sometime this month and have the opportunity to play. Are you one of those so. people, Friendsgiving? No offense. That's cringe, though. Oh, you mean, but you mean one of those people whose it. family is terrible? Yes. Mm. I am one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Oh, yeah, you did your read. Uh, yeah, happy, happy trails. trails. Happy trails. <laughs> so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools. It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I like my version though. It's uh, the podcast hey, is uh, over. Go home. Hey, Go home. Uh, happy Thanks trails. Stations. My wife is Borat. My so wife, happy, happy trails. trails. Happy trails. <laughs> Hey yo, get a move on, little doggies. Hey yo, happy trappy trails. Happy trails.
Hey, I'm please happy stop. trailing here. Oh, no, please stop. Please stop recording. Please, just, <laughs> please stop. Uh, okay. <laughs>